These highlights from the living planet make it look as if it's easy to film nature, but it's not. It's a tricky business because polar bears, given half a chance, would like to eat cameramen. The trouble with nature is it doesn't know when it's meant to be collaborating. Whales lead a very private life to which filmmakers are not invited. And birds just don't see any point normally in flying alongside a car full of cameras. So the makers of The Living Planet had to use all their natural low cunning and perseverance in order to play nature at its own game. This is the story of how it was done, how some things went wrong, but most things eventually came right. But as any fox will tell you, it's to Bristol we must go first. Foxes now flock to Bristol from all over the country, hoping to be talent spotted and given their own TV show. And it's inside this unlikely building in White Ladies Road that we shall find the man behind it all. Or rather, in front of it all. One thing that distinguishes men from other living creatures is that only men make films about other living creatures. And perhaps one of the most famous and interesting of these filmmakers is the species known as David Attenborough. Somewhat shy and not always easy to film in his natural habitat, we're lucky here to see the David Attenborough at work on his latest and greatest project, The Living Plant. His mission? To search out and photograph everything from volcanoes to jellyfish to explain how the Earth works. Now, for this, his habitat is totally useless. In London, where he lives, in Bristol, where he works, there are no volcanoes and no jellyfish. So he has to travel thousands of miles to search out his prey. Now, for this, he has a necessary boundless curiosity and endless energy. What he doesn't have is the vast quantity of money and expertise that only the BBC could offer. He enjoys this rather strange symbiotic relationship with the BBC, an odd and apparently friendly organism whose workings we do not yet fully understand. The idea of the living planet was to show how nature adapts to different environments. So their first job was to adapt David Attenborough by buying him lots of different sets of clothes. Rainforest clothes to keep him dry in places where it's always wet. And of course, a new set of khaki shorts and shirts for places where it's boiling hot. You can go and film a desert almost any time you like, of course, but other things are trickier. They had to wait two years to film a particular volcano, and when news came through that it had finally erupted, they had to drop everything and rush off, hoping it would still be alight when they got there. It seems to me, I don't know if it does to you, that, that there's a danger with, with nature films, that they, they come over so smooth and professional, I mean, things happen on cue so much of the time, that people may get a false impression of what nature is really like. Yes, um, th and that, in a sense, is a sort of the artifice of making films, because all art, all writing and all filmmaking and all recording is artificial, because you are trying to give a person through artifice, the viewer through artifice, the impression that the... Uh, camera is not there and you are continually pretending that I mean you and I sitting here are surrounded as we know by recordists and cameramen and all kinds Lord, of people yes, yes. Right. <laughs> so but you and I are pretending they aren't there because at the moment you are wishing to talk about what we we're talking about right well okay if, if you have slightly interfered with nature nature presumably has slightly interfered with you as well I mean what sort of difficulties do you get making a program like this what are the most amusing moments you remember <laughs> Well, they are the difficulties, really. Now, the, the, um, the difficulties um, are um, not actually uh, experienced by me because the bits that I do are the easiest bits, in as much as that it's not too difficult to sit on a rock and answer questions, or it's not too difficult to, to walk onto a rock and look at a camera and say something. Uh, the difficulties are, uh, are those that are encountered by the, by the cameraman and the directors and the recordists who actually have to get an animal doing something which perhaps nobody's ever even seen before. Those are extremely difficult things to do. But before you even try to do that, you have to get there. And the most interesting environments are, for some odd reason, always the furthest from public transport. So if Attenborough and the crew want to film in the Himalayas, they have to do a lot of walking. 
One Sherpa has now been on so many film trips that his mates call him Sherpa BBC. Those two going the other way are probably ITV Sherpas. In Algeria, where they had to walk for several days to find some ancient cave paintings in the middle of the desert, there are no Sherpas, but there are mules. The man with the big rucksack is a junior producer. The man with the small rucksack is a senior producer. Film crews, like everything else in nature, have pecking orders. South America has something you don't find in the desert or in the Himalayas, navigable rivers. I think rivers are the environment that natural history film crews like best. Even so, if there's only enough room for the cameraman or his equipment, but not both, it's the cameraman who has to get out and push. These natives waiting on the far shore have an old legend which says that one day their god will come back to them and he will be pushing an inflatable rubber dinghy across the river. When he gets out, he will approach them and he will say the magic words, Hello, I'm Hugh Maynard from the BBC. Have you seen a film crew anywhere? Well, they hadn't seen a film crew, apparently, and nor, it seems, had David Attenborough off the Peruvian coast, where we find him not only doing his own stunt work, but taking care of the equipment as well. Pull real hard. In Lapland, it takes only half a minute's driving lesson to learn to master a skidoo. This is a kind of motorized bobsleigh which everyone in the film crew can master, with the exception of David Attenborough, who travels incognito and chauffeur-driven. But then, he hasn't got a driving license.